Hey everyone, it's Mike here from The Art of Guitar, here with another Brutally Honest gear review video. I'm real excited about this one. I've always loved the way this guitar looked the first time I saw Kirk Hammett playing it in a video, and I thought it'd be so cool to have a guitar with like a horror graphic on it. And uh, I ended up getting it because of an emergency situation, at least that's what I called it. I was about to play a show, it was about a week away, and the guitar that I was gonna use suddenly broke down on me. So I had to bring it into my friend to get fixed, but it was gonna take a while. So I thought it was the perfect excuse, not that you really need one, to get a new guitar. So I went out and I ended up getting this Fender guitar. I'll talk about it in another video, but let's just say I brought it home and I was changing the strings and the saddle stripped out right away. So I'm like, nope. If it's one thing I can't have for shows, it's an unreliable guitar. So I brought it right back ended up going to another guitar store. I saw this on the top row and it just kind of lit up to me. You know, sometimes that happens, it kind of spoke to me. So I had the guy get it down, he got up on the ladder and handed it to me. And right away I noticed that it had a little bit of uh, weight to it. You know, it's not as light as I thought it was going to be. Like my Charvel or SG, those are pretty light. This had sort of like a medium weight to it. And I thought that's good because it feels, like it has enough weight to keep me grounded on stage. You know, I'm not gonna be throwing it around my neck or anything like that, but it's gonna feel real solid to me. And so he left me alone and I gave it a look and I'm just like, okay, right away I love the paint job. I'm a huge horror fan. I'm a little more into the 70s, 80s, 90s horror, but this is the old school classic Bella Lugosi graphic and I thought that was really sweet looking. And the graphic extends to the front of the headstock, which I think looks really great. It almost has like a camouflage kind of look, just the way it turned out like that. I thought it was a little weird. It doesn't say ESP, it just says LTD and it has Kirk Hammett's signature, but I still think it looks cool. But then I turned it around and I was a little disappointed at how busy the back of the headstock is. I mean, look at that. It has the serial number, it has the ESP, that's where it says ESP in the back. Uh, it has all this writing in the back, all these numbers, all these graphics, and I'm like, okay, that's a little bit busy, but I mean, no one's really gonna see it except me. And I was a little disappointed that it didn't have an Allen wrench holder, because I love it when guitars have that, my Charvel has that. That way, if my tram system goes a little bit funny before a show, I always have the Allen wrench there, which is a good feeling. I set it on my lap to give it the balance test. You know, I do one where I sit down, one where I stand up. And right away, I could tell that it would pass the sit down test, because as soon as it's on my leg, I just feel like it's there. You know, it's not tipping, it's not going back like my Les Paul does. Uh, and it's not going forward like that, like my Mockingbird does, which bums me out a little bit. Now I was still checking the guitar out visually, you know, and I started to uh, take note of the fretboard. The one thing I didn't really care for was that it's a really light brown. I prefer the darker looking fretboards. So uh, it's not a huge deal, but that was just something I was a little bit bummed out about. Then I took a closer look at these spiders, and at first I thought they looked really cool from a distance, but up close they kind of look like plastic spiders. You know, I know they're not supposed to look very realistic, but I thought that was kind of hokey, the way they look up close. And then it's the same graphic, they just get a little bit smaller when they get up to here. So I thought that would have been a lot cooler if it was like a Steve Vai type guitar where maybe it evolves, maybe it could start off as like an egg or something <laughs> and then grow into a giant tarantula, that'd be awesome. But it just kind of looks like a bunch of cut and pasted plastic spiders if you look up close. Then this is probably one of the biggest bummers of this guitar for me. The middle graphic, although it looks cool, it's this bat silhouette in a pearl, which is, is pretty cool on its own. But because it spans about three frets, my stupid brain gets confused easily on stage. So if I'm looking down and I see that, I sometimes will mess up because I'll think the 12th fret is any one of these three. That's just how my brain works when it sees things like that. For some reason it can handle the Ibanez gem inlays, but this one is kind of deceiving for me. I wonder if it's because this wing is so big and it tells my brain that that's the 12th fret. Anyhow, some people will say, well, don't you just look at the top of the neck? You know, you'll see the double dots right there. Yes, but live anything goes. Sometimes the lights are shining a certain way. And uh, when that happens, sometimes your inlays can light up in different ways. And that bat was just throwing me off enough to not feel very confident about it. And then I flipped the guitar around and I was a little disappointed to learn that this guitar has active pickups. You can tell by this little plate right here, it means that if you take it off, there's gonna be a nine volt battery inside. And once again, I hate having something that can go wrong live. And uh, it means that I'm gonna have to check the battery before every show and it's just an extra step that bums me out. But it more than makes up for it in the sound and the tone you get out of these pickups. So I gave it the strum test before I plugged it in at the store. 
was like, wow, this thing feels very solid, you know? The solid feel reminded me a lot of the Paul Reed Smith I used to have. I used to have a custom 22. I should have never got rid of it, but I did. I sold it to a student. When you play a guitar and it's not going through an amp, you could just tell the way it's vibrating, how solid it is. So sometimes you play a cheaper guitar and you feel it rattling in funny places or making funny sounds. This thing felt as solid as my $3,000 Paul Reed Smith did back in the day. By the way, that's probably the adjective you're gonna hear most when you hear people describe this guitar is that it's just solid all around. Uh, and that's what I was getting. That was the impression I was getting right off the bat. All right, so I plugged it in. I started messing around with the knobs. I was like, okay, good. These are the kind of knobs that actually have a little bit of traction to them. They're not too loose to where you're not sure where it's at. You might actually bump it or something. And it's not too tight to where you're not able to do really smooth uh, volume swells, which I love doing. <laughs> Plus, I really hate the feel of stiff pots. It reminds me of my early guitars when they would get rusty or something. It just felt like low quality whenever they got too stiff. And then I was very happy to find out that this is actually a three position switch, which is really nice because if I have a really decent bridge pickup, a decent neck pickup, and a good blend of the two, that's typically all I need, especially when I'm playing rock, which I mostly do. I wasn't too excited about the reverse headstock, even though this is one of the more low profile reverse headstocks. Some of them, like back in the day, would go, up at an angle, at a crazy angle. And I never liked the look of that. I always thought it was just bizarre looking. So I'm always preferring if it goes downward. But this one's more of a straight shot. The only thing I didn't like is that all the tuners, just like most reverse headstocks, are going to be on the bottom. So I have to reach down and I'm not used to the direction you have to turn things. I know that seems weird, but that's just a preference for me. I like it when they're on the top and I, I'm used to the direction that you have to turn to tighten and loosen them. Since it's a Kirk Hammett signature guitar, I figured I would just play some Metallica on it at the store and uh, annoy everybody. <laughs> Did some Hammett leads. I was really testing out the sustain and I was very happy to find out that it can sing for days. When you play it, it feels like it's a neck through neck. It's a bolt on actually. So it's just a smooth ride all the way through. And I think that contributes to how it sustains. The whole thing seems to vibrate together instead of feeling like it's a bunch of different pieces trying to fight each other. <laughs> Front pickup. See, I almost messed up because I thought that was the 12th fret. Let's do some middle pickup on distortion. Bridge pickup. I was very happy with the trem system. I did eventually bring it home and change the strings and I got a little nervous when I got to the last saddle because that's the other guitar when it stripped out. But uh, this one was solid all the way through. Never felt like anything was gonna strip out. This is a Floyd Rose 1000 bridge and everything about it felt strong. Like I could uh, actually be confident in it. Now, how stable is this trem system? After my set, I threw the guitar in the case and I shut it with the trem bar still on it. And the next day, I couldn't believe I did that. It's such a noob move, but I did do that. Uh, things happen when you play shows, you know, your brain's all over the place, you're rushing to get off the stage. So sometimes you make mistakes like that. But I was worried that I ruined the springs in the back and I took it out and I was so relieved when I hit a chord and it sounded like this. Perfect tune, everything was good. got a lot fatter. Front. Nice and smooth. Let's pick some of that. Neck pickup. Middle. Bridge pickup. I love how wide open the bridge pickup sounds in clean.
Here's a funny little side note. Every time I play and I lift my pick off the guitar, I see this guy's face and he looks completely freaked out. It's a bit distracting. All right, so we have 24 very smooth frets. I give it the old fret test. You know, when you go like this and you can feel them cutting into your fingers, this does not happen on this guitar. It's like they took care of every little detail. So I was completely sold on the guitar except for one thing, the final test, which is the standing up neck dive test. So I asked the guy for a strap. I was happy to see that they have these really nice strap holders and uh, they're pretty wide, so you don't have to worry about the strap falling off if you're not using strap locks. So I'm just gonna put the guitar on stand up and you guys can see for yourself, okay? Okay, ready? Perfect. So I was sold, I'm like, okay, let's do this. Uh, he was all excited. He went and grabbed the case from the back room and uh, I have to show you this thing. I both love and hate it and you'll see why in a second. Okay, so he brings out the case and I see this side first. I'm like, you know what? I can live with that. It's kind of artistic, you know? Looks a little beat up, but it looks, I don't know, it has a cool design to it. But then he flipped it over and I'm just like, ugh. So he went, he was like, you're gonna love this. And I was like, oh no. I was kind of embarrassed by it. It's like, I'm gonna have to bring this to a gig and uh, hide it in the back room or something. But it's not terrible. It's just a little too much for me, I would say, you know? Uh, if it was just the design of the back of this would have been perfectly fine with me, but this is a little too over the top, just in my opinion. Some people love it. So because of the price, I always wondered if I was just paying a lot for the paint job, and I was so pleasantly surprised to find out that I was not. Even if this paint job wasn't on this guitar, I would have paid the $1,500 for this because of how well it plays, how solid it feels, how it sounds, all that stuff. But uh, yeah, so it's a lot more than just a paint job. I would say it feels like a guitar twice its price. Uh, so it feels like a $3,000 guitar, like I've mentioned before. It reminded me a lot of my PRS Custom 22. So out of 10, I would have to give this guitar a 9.3. It has all the things I love in guitars that I love to play. The only drawbacks were really mostly cosmetic. I mean, the case, the back of the headstock. Uh, a few other things bothered me, like the reverse headstock, that's just a personal preference. And then the active pickups, which I could take or leave just because of the, uh, the headache that comes with them sometimes. So hopefully you guys like this review video. It was a lot of fun to do, a lot of fun to do the deep dive on this guitar. And I think I'll be playing this thing for a long time to come. All right, thanks everyone. We'll catch you at the next lesson, the next video, whatever we do. Okay, bye-bye.